Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, so we're going to do one wine. Uh, this is another wine that was donated to me, uh, also by HB Wine Merchants. They sent a lot of wine to me. Well, actually, this, this week, last week, somebody else sent me uh, next week's wine. But HB sends a lot of wine to me. Uh, I've, they've been good to me. I don't want to mess up that relationship by taking, you know, like years to review their wines. Um, I mean, it's been months, so hopefully... Uh, once I get these reviews out, I'll let them know they're out and then we can get a couple more uh, samples. They did send me something about some samples, but I hadn't really replied yet because I, I wanted to get some reviews in first before I'm getting more wines. Um, anyway, uh, so <laughs> what are we doing? We are going to do, uh, this is the Domaine du Theron, Theron, T-H-E with the low R-O-N, 2011 Cahors. Uh, this is a Malbec. It is actually 100% Malbec. Um, what? Malbec? Cahors? Where's that? All right, so, a little history. Um, so, Bordeaux, which is near Cahors, it's 125 miles west of Cahors, um, it is uh, where Malbec, Malbec was grown there. Malbec's been grown in Cahors forever, but just to give you a perspective, Malbec is one of the five ma main blending grapes of, of Bordeaux. Um, so you have Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Verdot, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Malbec, and then, if you're lucky, Carmenere, which is actually the sixth one, okay? Um, but Malbec was is one of the blending grapes of Bordeaux. There isn't a whole lot of Malbec uh, grown in Bordeaux anymore. However, it came from Cahors, uh, so it's considered the birthplace of Malbec. Now, um, in the literature here, um, they say that many of the... Um, wines from Cahors blend some percentage of Merlot to soften it a little bit. Uh, and in the little tasting or the notes here, they do say that the Merlot isn't of very good quality, um, so they don't use it, in, at least in this wine. They say they have, um, uh, they, the family that owns it makes a total of eight wines, most of which are 100% Malbec. I didn't go diving deep to find out what their other wines were and what, what other grapes might be in there. Um, but at least for this line, which is their Prestige, yeah, their Prestige line, um, it is 100% Malbec. So um, who is Domaine du Terran? Theron? Um, so... Well, first of all, they're going to talk about Malbec here. So this is actually kind of a cool little history thing. Um, for centuries, Malbec was as synonymous with Cahors as, say, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot-based wines with Bordeaux. It was a favorite of Roman emperors and French monarchs. The black wine, as it is called, of Cahors was even favored as a communion wine by the Russian Orthodox Church. Tsar Peter the Great, a major fan, was, conce was convinced, not conceived, was convinced that its high tannins brought relief to his stomach pains. Uh, in the 18th century, the Malbecs of Cahors were reserved for Russian officers. Um, the wines of Bordeaux were consigned to the ranks. So, um, yeah, you know, it has some history to it. Uh, then, after that, um, Cahors really fell out of favor. Um, for lots of reasons, uh, they do, they talk about the gradual silting up of the once navigable Lot River, um, and then there was uh, there was uh, these punitive taxes uh, inflicted by the gleeful Bourlet. Uh So the people from Bordeaux they controlled the port, right? So wines from that part of France had to go through Bordeaux to get out to the rest of the world. So if you weren't a Bordeaux wine, um, you had to pay extra taxes. Um, and then, uh, blah, 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 blah. then Phylloxera showed up and that pretty much hurt everybody, but it was devastating to Cahors. Uh, then a catastrophic frost of 1956, they say brought Cahors to his knees. By that point, the area under Vine had been reduced to one hundredth of its former size. 
Um, so then over time, they've been rebuilding it. Um, they now have a little over 11,000 acres um, under vine, uh, whose AOC wines must contain minimum 70% Malbec. Uh, Malbec in that area is also known as Oxera uh, or Cot. Um, it's also, it's also used, that name is also used in the Bordeaux area, depending on where in Bordeaux you are. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Uh, traditionally, Cahors offer two wine styles. Both fit the textbook Cahors descriptor of black wines, a term coined, coined by the English who ruled this part of France in the 14th century. Um, wines from Cahors Chalky Plateau are the darkest with mighty structures and can be hard in their youth. Wines from the Lot Valley, which is where this comes from, uh, with its sheltered sunny terraces, are a little fleshier and more open, hence ready to drink a bit earlier, but still across the board have a lot of tannin in it, a lot of tannin in architecture. I think they mean structure. Um, all right, so family owned and operated. The 30 acre property is in the village of Presac, uh, is one of three Cahors estates that are owned by the family. Um, there we go. All right. So who is this? Uh, Didier Pelvillan. Um, he is the current owner of this domain. His father um, in the 60s uh, fell in love with the area and he bought two estates, two vineyards estates in, in Cahors. Um, and then in 1993, Claude, who the father, retired, passed the torch to Arnaud, Didier, and Francis. And DDA got a knowledge degree, didn't say where, but probably I'm going to guess the, the Bordeaux. Um, and uh, the challenge was to tame the Tannic Malbec. The easy solution would be to, what, blend Merlot, which they don't do. Um, he said, but the quality Merlot in Cahors has rarely been top notch. Uh, the more difficult option, strenuously objected to by the older hard scrapple generation, required a willingness to leave money on the table by lowering yields and investing in longer aging of the wines before release. So, you know, lower yields so you get higher quality grapes and you age it longer just so the things, things soften a little bit. They're not as hard and tannic when you drink it, but they're still going to have lots of tannin. Um, and... See, other recent changes include alterations in canopy management to compensate for heightened summer temperatures and a reduction in barrel aging to keep the wine's fresh character. Um, thought there was some, oh yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. For Pelvion, the attraction lay uh, for this estate in the presence of volcanic soil, a rarity in Cahors, leading to a hallmark minerality or Pierre de Fusil or gun smoke effect. Uh, he is helped by the well-respected Henri Jean Croissant, who oversees viticulture at all three of the family properties. All right, so this wine retails for about $18, if I am... Yes, approximately $18. Um, da -da -da -da. Thought there was something else in the other thing here. So it comes from the Lot Valley uh, the domain was established in 1973, two years after the region became an AOC. Um, they are planted on limestone and clay soils with cover grasses planted between the rows to control vigor and limit the yields. Um, maceration and fermentation takes place in temperature controlled stainless steel tanks. Once the primary fermentation is complete, uh, the wines are racked to different stainless steel tanks where they complete the malolactic fermentation. So malolactic, if you don't know, we don't remember, um, that's where the malic uh, acid turns into lactic acid. Almost every single red wine goes through this at some point. Um, white wines don't always go through. That's why they may have really apple-y and pear type of flavors um, instead of that buttery and smooth. I mean, you can still have apple flavors in a in a wine that's a white wine that's gone through malolactic, but it's not like the dominant fruit. So you'll get um, more of the the buttery or creamier, um, uh, softer uh, feel instead of the really acidic feel. Um, the wines are aged in barrique for about 12 months, one third of which is new wood from a variety of coopers. The best barrels are selected and blended into the Cuvée Prestige, which is their top Cuvée and released after another year or more of refinement in the bottle. I thought they said they, 12 months, I thought somewhere in here they talked about how long it age in the bottle too. Maybe it is two, 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 two years total. All right, 
So let's get into the wine. We're, we're almost at 10 minutes and kickoff's in three minutes. So I got two more reviews to do. All right. Bum, bum, bum. A little fantasy football action going on. Got David Johnson. I had Adrian Peterson in my keeper league in, uh, for like five years. Really hard to drop him as a keeper and then go with somebody else. But guess what? I look like a freaking genius. <clears throat> and it's not because I thought of it. Somebody gave me some very sage advice. So that's to say I look like a genius. I'm saying I am one. Doesn't hurt I have Jordy Nelson too. All right. Uh, some nice deep red color. Uh, you can see it through just a little bit, but not a whole lot. Wow. This is some Malbec right here. Hey, man, nothing against Argentine, Argentinian, whichever adjective you want to use. Uh, Malbec. I watched a movie on that from 2011. It was very interesting. Um, yeah. So... If I didn't know what this was, I would, I might throw this into the Northern Rhone uh, Syrah camp. Um, definitely some uh, smokiness, uh, meatiness, black pepper. Maybe I'll bring this wine tomorrow. Granted, okay, this is next, this is the following week. Last week I said I might bring the other wines to the tasting group tomorrow. I might bring this one instead and then bring Maybe the white. That's what I might do. Yeah. Great nose on this. But yeah, lots of um, more mineral minerality to it. So uh, smokiness. Um, I guess gunflint, yeah. Um, meatiness. Uh, peppers. Spices. Cedar box. Potpourri again. Very much like, you know, the the Southern Rhone wine from last week, but not as intense. This is really intense and dark. Pencil lead, pencil shavings. I, I, and realize I have not said a fruit yet because I don't really smell any fruit in here. If it is, it's black fruit. This is the Malbec I want. Again, nothing wrong. Dude, I've had some really pretty freaking amazing Ar Argentine Malbecs. Let me tell you, dude. But this. Again, very much the palate and the nose are almost exactly the same. I don't really get a lot of fruit. I mean, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna stretch, it'll be like blackberry, maybe black raspberry. I mean, it's juicy. It's definitely tannic, um, but it's I don't feel like I don't feel like my mouth's getting ripped apart from tannin. But you can definitely get the tannin in there. I mean, I would definitely call this a medium plus on the tannin at minimum. Um, but my mouth is watering, so it's got great acid to it. Um, I think this is a fantastic wine, especially the eighteen dollars. Yeah, like I would totally, so I mean, I have the wines over here, right? So if I had to choose between, whoops, this wine and this wine, personal preference, I would normally go with, I would normally just be all day long, Southern Rhone, yeah, great stuff, but man, especially when I have like, you know, you know, honestly, this is a little bit lighter style wine. This is a fuller bodied wine, fuller body style wine. Um, kind of depends on what food I'm eating. But if I'm just looking for like a nice steak wine, Boom, this is it. Especially if you get some spices on it, you get some uh, Cajun spices, you get some peppercorn, you know, you, 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 uh, or you, you blacken it, blackening spices. Um, wow, I mean, barbecue, um, beef jerky, you know, peppered meats, um, grilled, like absolutely just like on a grill type of stuff with wood, not with gas. Wood, a wood grill. <laughs> 
<laughs> you get some mesquite barbecue. Barbecue, you get some great pepper, peppery barbecue sauce with this stuff. Oh my God. I'm not spitting that. That's good stuff. I'm having pizza for dinner tonight. Probably the other one instead. That's kind of why I was like, man, I want, I want that with my pizza. Yeah. I think it's a, an excellent wine. Well made. Very tasty. $18. You should buy it. All right. So um, that's going to do it for tonight or this episode. Um, as always, thank you for coming by. Um, click the links above to friend me up. Hit the link over there. Donate some ducats to me so I can buy some wine. Hey, I get some free wine occasionally, but most of the wine I do buy. Um and then uh, go down there, hit the hit the links below on the website to uh, check out where this wine is from. And we will see everyone again next time.